Hi YouTube, welcome back to By the People. You Neverwinter fans, or new Neverwinter fans, this is really geared more toward you. Uh, if you're starting out with a new character in Neverwinter and aren't familiar with the game, um, there are some different things that I wish I'd known right at the beginning to help speed me on my way and maybe make things a little bit easier um, for me, and I hope to share some of that information with you today. So, one of the first things to do is uh, after you've picked whatever character you've decided to go with, whatever class that is, uh, I highly suggest you go online to some place like MMOMinds.com uh, or just type in a search of the particular character you are going to be using and uh, look for some builds of that character. Uh, that'll give you an idea on what, uh, how to set your dexterity, uh, strength, um, things like that just to really kind of help you out along the way give you a little bit of a guide I mean you could always tweak them and you don't have to stick with them but uh, it does make a little bit of a difference um, whenever you're setting up the character to help you survive as you're moving through the different quests throughout the game and uh, basically you have two parts of the game two main parts of the game you have pre-level 70 and then after level 70. Uh, right now I'm just covering the pre-level 70 area of this. Uh, so that being said, once you select your class, uh, you have something else that's pretty important uh, to help you do well and enjoy the game a little more thoroughly. Uh, around level 20 you'll get a quest uh, for a mount. Uh, this <coughs> I'm in, excuse me, Protector's Enclave. And uh, this is where you'll come to redeem your little Welcome game to the token. Stables, where we meet all of your mount needs. See this little guy here, and uh, you redeem your token, and you can get a mount. Uh, these mounts make a big difference to your gameplay. Uh, just it speeds things up when you're running around the maps, uh, trying to get back to the exit to leave, uh, to get back to Protector's Enclave, um, to turn in your quest, and these make a big difference <laughs> if you're doing it all on foot that will definitely slow down the storyline for you uh, the other thing you can do though is also buy one uh, you can buy one for five gold pieces so go ahead and pick up those extra items that uh, drop along the way and go ahead and uh, identify them and sell them off and you can get your gold pieces that way which is very nice early in the game the scrolls of identification drop very uh, readily and handily, so it makes it real nice hold the most. for you whenever you're uh, trying to identify items. Uh, it's a cheap way of getting scrolls. Uh, just make sure you don't forget to pick those up as you're going through. If you happen to miss some or run short, you can also go to something called the Auction House, and you can buy some there. Uh, you can go into Consumables. And okay, I can type in scroll of identification, and this comes up. And voila! So you can also pick some additional scrolls up as you're going through. Now, if you buy one of these uh, early on, before you get into VIP and all that, what you have to do, if you buy anything from the au auction house like that, you have to go to a mailbox to pick it up. Uh, you might spend some time, if you aren't aware of this, trying to find the item, thinking, what the heck, it's, it's just not here. Well, it is there, it's in your account. You have to go to the mailbox, check your mail. Yes, you have in-game mail, believe it or not, and this is where you would pick it up. Also, when you sell items and get Astral Diamonds in exchange for those items, you also pick up the money that you get from a mailbox. Now, second thing, <coughs> when you're starting out, uh, once you get a little bit of gold moving through your hands, you want to probably pick up a character companion. I happen to like healers to start out early in the game, pre-70. They just help keep you from dying quite as often. Uh, once you start to stack up some Master Diamonds, you can certainly buy better types of healers. But uh, you come in here, you'll have a an assignment uh, right around the level 20 as well, where you will have... Uh, You'll go talk to this little guy down at the end of the hallway, and uh, through him you'll end up getting a character companion. But uh, I think it's, we talked to this one here. There we go. So, for two gold pieces I can get any one of these companions. So it's nice uh, 
they said, I like the healer companions, the apprentice healers. Uh, they just uh, give you a little bit of an extra boost in healing uh, when you get into some tough situations. Uh, a lot of people like Striker companions, a dog is a nice one to start out with. Um, you can try any of the others though. Really pre-level 70, uh, they'll do you, do you some good. The healer's better. Uh, the striker companions don't normally attack very often, or not as often as you would prefer, so I go with the healing side of it. And I recommend that. Okay, another thing I highly recommend you do early in the game is go and do your dungeon skirmishes. Um, if you're curious about them, you can come talk to this guy, but you can earn Astral Diamonds. Astral Diamonds and Zen are really your main game currencies. The gold is, you can, it's helpful with some items, but it's really not your main currency. It's one, one of the currencies available. Uh, uh, you have Tourmaline Trade Bars, and there are others on different levels, but uh, these are gold. Astral Diamonds and Zen are your main ones. Uh, the Zen and Astral Diamonds get you really cool items, but you can earn uh, through dungeon runs up to 10,800 Astral Diamonds per day. Uh, the rough Astral Diamonds, you have to convert them over to Diamonds, which is a pretty easy process. Um, and then through skirmishes. PvP, you can play that too if you really want to grind it out, but uh, you know, that's up to you. You can do that any way you want. Go into my little gold stack here. If I, as I run the dungeons, I get the rough astral diamonds I was just talking about, then I hit refine and that converts it over to spendable astral diamonds. And you spend those back where I showed you a moment ago on the auction house to buy different items. You can get everything, uh, get a lot of different things from enchantments to other special mounts. And uh, they can be quite expensive, but um, I'm going to do a quick search here and show you these are different insignias to go into your mounts. I'm not going to cover any of that right now, but you can buy a basic uh, water deep horse mount if you'd rather pay Astro Dimes instead of gold for it, and they go on up. And then they start to get more expensive as you get into better quality. And if you highlight over it, it shows you what benefit you get. You're getting a plus a 50% bonus, and then you have insignia slots, which are important uh, because the different slots will give you different capabilities. And then as you go on up in price, your movement speed, as you can see there, increases. Went from 50% to 80%, and then it goes up to 110%. And uh, there are a lot of different bonuses that occur with that. Uh, but this is more of a basic guide, so I'm not going to get into that too much. Uh, another thing, whenever you're running daily dungeons, you'll want to talk to this little guy. He's the Dungeon Chess Key Master. Go to my map here, you can see where I'm at here in relation to the rest of the world and Protector's Enclave. This is kind of where the Lord of the Enclave sits, Lord of uh, Neverwinter. He's all the way up there and we're down towards the bottom here. And we're down right in the front of this bazaar. But um, the reason being is you get a dungeon chess key. I already picked mine up for the day, but uh, whenever you run through the dungeon, you can get uh, some adventure seals which you can convert into other things and you get a good treasure piece. Um, when you get your adventurer seals you go see this little guy in here and you can buy little goodies, the general wares, and you can get some nice enchantments, maybe an eternal equipment chest or a bag of rough, st rough astral diamonds. You can see there I have 850. Uh, let's just click on this. I'm going to buy eight of these. Boom. There we go. And uh, now if I'm looking to make that all important Zen, I can go take that. I can put it into the auction house and I can sell that off. I believe you have to get the quest for the auction house, as I recall, before you can sell items. I might be wrong on that. And that's fine. But I just got Exchange eight of those and hold my control key down here. Take that over. And you can see that's worth about 3000 at a buyout price on the auction house. So pretty cool. I'm going to hang on to my stack, not list it, but I just wanted to show you that that was there. Whoops, pulled the wrong thing off. There we go, clear that out. Okay, so that's that.
Yeah, as you're going through these dungeons, other items will drop. Uh, some are more valuable than others. Your blue items are going to be your most val valuable in the earlier levels. Uh, green next, and then your common, uh, which will have no, just be a plain color. Uh, you can sell, a lot of times the blue armor will sell on the auction house for you, so you can go ahead and list those. Uh, you can sell those for a higher amount of gold if you need gold, which is also fine. The companion that I showed you a moment ago, too, they do upgrade with you as you go through and use them. They will go up in level. You can see I have a beginning level cleric here, and uh, don't which you just have them go around with you and they'll upgrade. I mean, you can do a begin training on them, and uh, they'll disappear from you for a while. But uh, you can just keep running them through, and they'll get up to level 20. I'm not going to cover leveling up past there. You can pay astral diamonds or companion tokens to upgrade them up to a higher level quality. I wouldn't recommend doing that with any of the basic characters that you get in Protector's Enclave like this. Uh, wait until later in the game. Um, and you, Again, you really shouldn't have to mess with that until past you're past level 70. Uh, but if you're a real grinder and really get into uh, getting that stuff, then uh, by that point there are other guides out there and I have some too that show you what kind of characters you want to buy and uh, there are different reasons for those. They give you different types of bonuses and advantages along with uh, fighting and healing you along the way. So again don't waste any astral diamonds on these basic characters to upgrade them. Now if you look here we have something called a defense slot and then we can equip different jewelry for these. Well these companions can also pass on some of their uh, some of their traits onto you and you have something called uh, Eldritch runestones which are pretty good they'll give you a percentage early on in the game uh, of a bonus to you you can buy those on the auction house as well or they will drop for you um, but uh, they give you part of, part of your companions uh, capabilities which are pretty cool they can pass those along to you so I suggest using those uh, another part of the game, uh, something that's nice to do early on, is when you start to get that those astral diamonds, uh, don't s just start blow them on all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, there's something you can do that is called the Zen Exchange. I'll go on up here, and let's say I want to buy some Zen. Um, I can put up these astral diamonds and convert that into Zen. Like if I wanted to do that right now, let's say I want 100 Zen. I could go put in 500 each. That's the cap of it right now, and you're really not going to get anything if you put anything below that amount, so you might as well go with it. But uh, I would spend 50000 to convert that into a 100 Zen, and uh, somebody else on the market will that will transfer over for you. Uh, right now, it's taken several days to convert over, but that's how you do that. You do that here, and you can do vice versa. You can sell some Zen if you wanted to and uh, buy Astro Diamonds. You went the other way. Uh, Zen is what you get whenever you pay cash or use a credit card in the game. Uh, I don't. I just do a lot of playtime and uh, dungeon crawls to be able to get my astral diamonds. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, we populate the servers and help keep things moving along and are available to help people through dungeons and quests where they're, they need help. Uh, so that's a benefit to the folks over at Ark and Neverwinter. Keep the game going. But it's also nice if you want to break open that credit card and buy some items uh, that helps keep them employed so they can keep us playing too so uh, I just haven't at this point uh, used any of my own money to do that but that's an important currency aspect of the game you'll get very familiar with that especially as you get up around the level 70 plus area you'll know what I mean another important thing I didn't pay a lot of attention to early in the game was professions uh, Professions allow you to do different things. Um, leadership profession, it's one a lot of people like, but it's very slow. It takes a very long time to rank that up. But what you can do is create different things in the game. Uh, you can use them for yourself, or you can put them on the action, auction house and sell them off, uh, which is pretty cool. It's another way to build up uh, some astral diamonds for you. Uh, again, leadership is the slowest of these. Um, the rest of these jewel crafting is pretty cool. Leather working. Um, I have 
most of these on different characters that I have all the way up to level 25. Uh, but like, let, I'll just show you this real quick. Go ahead and complete these right now. Show you what you get. See, I can take these items here. I've created these, and then I can use those to create other things in alchemy. The other thing I can do is also sell these items. If I go into inventory, go down to professions here. See all these little things? These are all profession assets that you pick up in the game. You can pick them up when you're doing dungeon runs. And in this case, I happen to create some of this stuff um, with my different professions. And they just go into storage. I can use them or I can sell them off on the auction house. Uh, just like the other equipment that you pick up as you're doing your dungeon runs. So it's pretty cool. It's a little bit time consuming, might be a little bit tedious. Some people don't like to mess with it just because it uh, takes away from some of the gameplay for them. But, uh, you know, it's a nice way to pick up some Astral Diamonds uh, as that becomes important to you and uh, you're after level 70 gameplay. And again, they're pretty easy to get started. Now click on one here that I haven't started. Like if I wanted to get this one going, I have nothing in this, haven't done anything with it. You just start here. I can create a little dude, little helper, and I can hit continue. I can create him. It only takes five seconds, so we'll do that real quick. Click on him, start that. You can see it's going through. Voila. Collect my result. There we go. I got my first carver. And uh, that begins the leveling up process. And then here I go to this. I can get 50 XP for this uh, artificing profession. And uh, you just keep going up and up and up, up to level 25. It's a, it, it, it's a long process. It will take a little while. But uh, again, it's a nice way to make some extra Astro Diamonds. If these characters too, you can create other characters as you roll up here, like you can roll four of these guys into uh, the next guy to get uh, him. Uh, if you're fun doing those skirmishes and dungeon crawls, a quicker way to do that is just go into the auction house, uh, go into browse, go into professions, and let's see if I'm into artifacts, and go like that, and I can do a quick search, and there are some of the supplies I was talking about, but if you're looking for helpers, so you can create these items as you start to level up. If you don't have a lot of patience or maybe you're not a real dedicated player or just want to kind of get through this, uh, you can go ahead and get into, there we go, there's some people you can buy. Better quality dude uh, for about a thousand Astro Diamonds today. Uh, but you can buy them instead of making them because it takes time when you make them. Um, in fact, it takes a lot of extra time. So there you go. I think the last thing I'll cover in this is storage. Uh, storage is pretty precious in the game. Uh, make sure you do those quests within the game that give you a bag. I have different videos on my channel that show you the quests in game that give you a free bag for doing the quests. Uh, you can also buy them. You can go to the Z market and this is the other place to spend, uh, obviously spend that Zen that you Got when you converted your astral diamonds ever. Um, you can buy all kinds of cool companions here. Uh, you can buy bags, which is what I'm talking about right now. And they are kind of expensive, but again, it, uh, they are precious uh, because you start to run out of space pretty quickly. And it's a nice way to uh, keep everything on hand. Uh, there are two other things that happen. You also will get a bank, which is right over here. This is an easy location to get, but this is my guy's personal bank. So you get these slots, which is really cool. And you have a shared bank account, and you use that for your alternate characters if you have alternates. I also recommend buying alternate characters whenever they come up on sale. Uh, sometimes they go as low as 100 Zen to buy a couple additional character slots. And uh, you can use those to go through and... Uh, Maybe just do professions or do one other thing, which is invocations. Uh, you will also get to do this, I think it's around level 15, um, where you can start invoking. Um, 
unless you have VIP. That's making it a little complicated, I guess, but uh, you need to be by one of the uh, healing fire, uh, and you can invoke on those healing fires, maybe at the beginning of each of your dungeon runs, uh, or you pick up these little personal altars that you can activate anywhere in the game. Uh, they'll heal you, but you can also invoke with those. But what that will give you are astral diamonds whenever you invoke. Uh, they give you bonus astral diamonds. Uh, you have to complete a dungeon run or skirmish to be able to pick those up but then they will add to the total of the astral diamonds that you get at the end of the run so that's uh really cool so those are uh, some basics there is a lot to this game don't get too frustrated there are a lot of details um you can uh, some people just run a lot of dungeons and like to do a lot of group stuff and they skip a lot of the quests uh, that's one way to play I enjoyed playing through the quests I have a lot of videos showing you different aspects of that and how to get through those and if you run into trouble and miss something you can go look at my videos and see where to go back and, and uh, and do it and pick it up but uh, there are a lot of ways to play this game and there are a lot of details like I said but this uh, gives you some basics like I said having a mount having a companion character early in the game uh, will do a lot to help you on your way and uh, maybe start those professions uh, as an additional way to make some astral diamonds for yourself and uh, just remember have fun with the game it is a game um, enjoy it and uh, hopefully that's helpful to you if uh, not or if you'd like to see some additional content in regards to this leave a comment in the comment section i'm always happy to see that both good and bad uh, please like share and subscribe and have fun